Hello, and welcome to Pulumi TV. My name is Mike Matrall. In this installment, we'll review how to use Pulumi stacks and components to better organize your infrastructure as code. Pulumi is a modern infrastructure as code tool that helps you declaratively describe your cloud infrastructure using real programming languages. Pulumi enables developers and operators to work seamlessly together and to help drive adoption to the cloud much faster. Let's get started. In this episode, we'll review a couple of core concepts you'll need to organize, structure, and share your code. We'll cover what a Pulumi program is and how that relates to a Pulumi project. Then we'll visit Stacks as a way to instantiate our Pulumi programs. And then we'll cover resources as far as what's built in and what you can use to customize your own extractions. Let's begin. At the basis of any sort of Pulumi project is a Pulumi program. A Pulumi program is a collection of files written in the language of your choice. We support TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, Go, and .NET. These are the files that are going to ultimately describe what infrastructure you want to instantiate. For it to be runnable by the Pulumi CLI, we have to take the Pulumi program and place it in what's known as a Pulumi project. And what this means is that we just have additional metadata and the ability to install its dependencies that relates to the code in question. You can either construct this Pulumi project using the Pulumi CLI and our templating system, or you can manually construct it if you want to create the individual files yourself. Let's see how to use a CLI to get started. We'll create a new directory first and CD into it. In this case, we're going to create an S3 bucket on Amazon. We'll use Pulumi new which will give us the ability to choose a template. We're going to choose AWS using Python. It'll ask us for a project name. Let's say my super cool S3 bucket. We'll get our description. We'll go with the default. The stack name, we're going to go with the default of dev, but this could be anything that makes sense to us. We'll choose the region. I'm going to choose US West 2. And now we just have to run a couple of setup instructions to actually run the update in Python. So we'll set up a virtual environment and activate it. We'll run some more commands to get our install set up. And then lastly, we'll install the dependencies needed by this program. With that in place, we have everything we need constructed to run the Pulumi project. But before we run the update, let's look at the code. As you can see, this is written in Python. I'm importing the Pulumi project using the S3 capabilities of our SDK, and then creating a bucket and exporting the name of that bucket. Let's run this update. We'll first see a preview of the changes that will be presented to us. In this case, create a new bucket. We can see the details of that if we still choose to. And if we want to perform the update, we'll click yes. Great. If I do Bloomy stack output, I'll see that since I exported the bucket name of my bucket, we can use this to pass on to other Pulumi programs, to share it with folks, or to simply collect artifacts based on the programs that we ran. We can explore what stack we're in by running the Pulumi stack command. Again, a stack is an instantiation of a Pulumi program. Let's dive deeper into what a stack is. In Pulumi, a stack is an instantiation of that Pulumi project. Stack names could be anything you'd like them to be. They closely mirror your Git branching strategy and the names often match. So for example, if my Pulumi project had a dev staging and prod branch, I most likely have a dev staging and prod stack. This allows you to use the same code, but template it, parameterize it, or manage it as you see fit on a per environment basis. Stacks can also be tagged with metadata that allows you to sort 
filter, or even adapt the stacks to be better searched and used within the Pulumi ecosystem. As we saw earlier, the Pulumi stack command gives us a dump of all the information that this current stack is in. We can see multiple stacks if they exist. Currently, we only have one, the dev stack. And we can create them by easily saying stack init new stack. We can also erase that stack. We'll confirm the deletion and it's gone. Let's go back onto the dev stack by selecting it. Great. Now that we've seen how to get started with Pulumi using a Python project, for example, and what stacks are, let's shift gears a bit and show you what using stacks looks like with a real concrete example. In my second tab, as denoted by the bottom, I have two separate projects, an infra project and an app project. Let's dive deeper into what each of these are. In this example, I created two Pulumi projects, one for my infrastructure, in this case, a Kubernetes cluster that I'll be deploying on GKE. And I created a second Pulumi project for my application that will be deployed into the cluster from the former stack, infra. I will export some key properties such as the kubeconfig file and the namespace to be working in from the stack and stacks can actually reference other stacks to pull data and key values that make sense to them. If we're looking here at our app project, I can leverage the Pulumi config subsystem to reference a stack by using its essential reference name that is of the structure user, project, and dev, or stack name for that matter. To retrieve that stack, we can go back to the infrastruct and say, Pulumi stack ls, and my stack reference is my username, the project, and the stack name. In this application stack, as we can see in this helper script, I automatically set not only the zone and project to use in GCP, but I also allow myself the ability to reference a stack that the infrastructure was built in. So in this infrastructure, I stood up a basic Kubernetes cluster. Because updates in Pulumi are item potent, if I run it again and there are no changes, nothing will change. I can see its output by running stack output and there I can see the kubeconfig file, which is a secret, and the namespace that I'm going to be deploying in from my application pro project. If I switch gears to the application stack, and I look at its code, it's going to pull the kubeconfig and namespace that I need, and its index is actually just going to wrap both of those properties in a provider that's leveraged for us by Kubernetes. In Pulumi, any provider in Kubernetes, for example, it's just as simple as specifying the kubeconfig file and optionally a namespace to operate within. We're going to then leverage that provider by creating a new demo app. And as you can see, I've now attempted to create a new class called a demo app, which leads us to our next construct. Resources. Resources in Pulumi ultimately stem from the resource class. We have custom resources and component resources, which we'll see next. A custom resource is any given infrastructure object that's usually uh, and typically created by a provider that's specific to the provider you're using or the service you're intending to use. So if I'm on a Clever Writer and I want to instantiate VMs, objects, storage, block storage, Kubernetes clusters, virtual networks, those will ultimately be given to me by the provider for the, for the user that I'm actually housing in. So for example, if I'm running on AWS or if I'm running on GKE, I will be using the GKE provider to then create resources that are known in the GCP ecosystem, such as VMs, block storage, GKE clusters, virtual networks, etc. Custom resources are the resources 
that we innately will be constructing in a given environment. These are fixed, and these are known. However, if I want to create my own set of resources, I will leverage a component resource to co-locate any resources that belong together and should be managed together. So for example, if a custom resource is the various resources that a provider makes available to instantiate over APIs, such as VMs, object storage, and block storage, a component resource can be a collection of infrastructure resources that make sense to you as far as living together. So an example would be a container for your app, some config data, and maybe an object storage to store any output. When I want to actually enable the reuse of this abstraction, that's when I reach for a component resource. So let's look at what a component resource looks like in action. I'll first create a new demo app class that extends the Pulumi component resource. In here, I can uh, prescribe a constructor for it, some built-in properties that it'll have, but ultimately what I'm going to be doing here is deploying a workload into Kubernetes. The resources need not matter, right? In this case, I'm creating a container image, pushing it off the registry, attaching some volumes, some config data, some secrets, and then I'm deploying it into Kubernetes. But the idea is this is a representation of what I, as the application developer, want my application to look like in Kubernetes. Again, the details need not matter, but the idea is that I created an abstraction that made sense to me here. These are a set of resources that belong together and they should be deployed together. And so we can create an abstraction using the component resource class to achieve such a purpose. This also allows us to invoke an instantiation of the demo app in as little as three lines. I can just reuse the class and pass it to the provider to deploy into the appropriate GKE cluster. Component resources are very powerful. They allow you to customize how your infrastructure should be managed. Some additional references, if you want to learn more, are available here. We highly encourage you to check out our Pulumi architecture and concepts, which dives into our programming model, gives you more information to go off of with regards to how to organize your stacks and your resources. If you'd like to see what using stacks at scale looks like, we have put together a crosswalk for Kubernetes set of playbooks which is a reference architecture for how to manage Kubernetes in production using best practices. We make great use of stacks and re stack references in those playbooks, and we encourage you to check it out if you want to dive deeper. Lastly, the code for this program is available at Plumi TV's GitHub repo. Please check it out, open an issue, leave us a comment, or share it with friends. That's all the time I have for today. Thank you, and have a great day.